Greetings. We're going to wait until about uh, five after, so another few minutes here and then get started. Hello, Philip. Hey, good morning. Good morning. If you have any agenda items, you can add them to the meeting notes as well as your name yeah i, I did a note earlier i um i haven't joined for quite a few sessions of this so i just wanted to discuss the uh dashboard and the activity on arm overall um so it was really a, a more free flow discussions with the group sounds good yeah we missed the meeting up at uh, kubecon and um uh, and with uh Bank holidays or other vacations, it made things difficult to attend the last few calls. Looking at um, what may, how we can go forward with the group, um, ideally to get more uh, interactions and contribution from more people. Open it up. All right. A few new people on the call. Are there any walk-in items right now? There's, um, we have the main one is the status of CI on ARM that Philippe has added. Does anyone else have anything? All right. Philip, you have the floor. 
Yeah, I I, um, I really put this as a placeholder as uh, as um, tracking the uh, the work happening on CNCFCI and and uh, looking at the respective projects which are there. I just wanted to understand a little bit on uh, how much more work was uh, happening and also in the tracking of what works or what doesn't work on the respective projects uh, uh, highlighted into the uh, CI dashboard. So it'd be good to, uh, to get your, your view or your status on that and, and, uh, and see how we can move from there. And, and I agree uh, the, the subsequent question you raised into how to get more participation into that activity is a very valid one too. All right. Um... I can give an update. I, it sounds like a, on specifically the CNC FCI dashboard. Yeah. And do you have any knowledge of other ARM CI stuff that you can talk to? You mean which are outside the scope of the dashboard or? Yeah, yeah. outside yeah. of the scope of the dashboard. Yeah, so the ARM team is is uh, still uh, progressing work around the Kubernetes um, uh, conformance testing, as you know. So um, that that's work which is progressing, and there are other components of cloud native elements that um, our engineering team is contributing architecture support per se, but not so much focused onto the CI element. So um, I think. Um, this page on the CI dashboard still captures the main uh, core projects as a downstream CI for for the validation exercise of the branches you're pulling from, and um, there's still value in actually highlighting what passes or what doesn't pass in terms of uh, build, test, and deploy onto the ARM platforms that packet. All right. the, the, the tricky part is, I think, um, how to monitor when things fail, whether the failure is, uh, is what the failure is attributed to, whether it's particular commits or if it's an architectural issues that would need to be fixed or whether it is something else which is elsewhere in the code and which just resolves after a few uh, additional changes in the upstream code base, right? <clears throat> Sounds good. Um, well, I can talk a little bit to it. Um, so the, for this, for the folks who aren't familiar with it, um, we're referring to the CNCS uh, CI dashboard, which is um, one of the initiatives that CNCF has uh, started itself. <clears throat> and the goal um, has shifted multiple times. Um, the current iteration of this, and um, I'm having some browser issues, I can see is showing a little weird, but you can go to cncf.ci if mm -hmm. you want to look at it. And the current iteration is um, moved towards the top part is talking about the test environment that um, projects are running in. And then you, you have all the different projects that are running on it. Um, overall, right now, the initiative is in a maintenance mode. Um, mm -hmm. We have, we had talked about the next iteration of what this could be. And as part of uh, maybe one of the comments that you had, what, how do we determine whether it's a a CI build issue with the, maybe the environment or the upstream project is having a, a, a build problem or whatever it may be. So one of the things that we started moving towards and was the long-term goal to shift everything over was integrations with the upstream projects. So um, like 
Um, I think the linker D2 might be an example. So the linker D2 is actually doing an integration. This is uh, kind of getting technical here, but the the first iteration of this, it sh while it shows GitLab, what's actually happening is it's not doing a build. There's a an integration to a um, a proxy over to whatever the project's CI system is. So Linkerd2 is um, on their own um, Linkerd system. They happen to be, you can see here, it's actually Travis CI, if I, if I bring this up. And then this goes out and looks at whatever the project is doing and, and then gets the status information. So rather than having everything internal, which say Core DNS and a lot of them, these were built builds that are actually running the builds and creating the binaries in GitLab. Instead of doing that, it's pushing um, the work external, which is already done. And then what happens when you look at different architectures, like if we go over and look at, say, ARM, then if you see here, um, Jaeger is showing NA, which may not mean that they don't support ARM, but potentially what this could mean is Jaeger doesn't have public CI builds on ARM. So ideally what would happen would, would be to work with the projects to get public builds of all the architectures and then the different versions. Um, so over here, those aren't familiar, it's, it's not, um, the text is, overriding this, but it says Kubernetes underneath. So this is the stable and head of Kubernetes and testing, do these work? So maybe they do public builds of ARM on stable, but not on head. So rather than um, having it all internally and redoing the build systems that are already happening, try to help um, projects to have more coverage on at least the stable versions of the projects and stable versions of Kubernetes that are running daily, which would include ARM. That's the goal there. And then the next part, which you can see all of the deploy is gray, but if I go over here um, to x86 stable, I think was what we had. So some of these are filled. Uh, actually, it looks like they're all filled for whatever reason. But if these pass versus the NA. What this means is we have artifacts or the, the binaries or containers and everything for the project are created. What we would want for the second step to um, work with projects would be to get them to publish the artifacts at least on every release, ideally on when they do um, other commits and other things. If you have the artifacts from the CI builds publicly available, then we would like to pull those down and use those artifacts for, for deploy. The test column is for integration. Mm -hmm. So this started, as I was saying, in some of these, um, TEF and Vitesse, the these are actually integrations into their CI systems. And we were moving towards that. Um, and then a lot of the focus got shifted away. So I think the next step would be to see overall interest from the projects and the value that it could bring to them and then um, contributions for supporting the effort to go forward. So essentially we, we have a prototype and the idea of, okay, this looks like we can do it. We've started some integrations we have that configuration maintainable, um, so TEF could update where it hits on their CI system. The test could independently do that. So we have the prototype for that, and if if um, people are interested in us, then that's where we go, which would help with those false positives, Philippe, that you were referring to. Okay. So if, if, if we're integrating externally, we'd be able to do that. And then you have this 
what we would be thinking and what you're not saying here, but we have some, um, we showed this in the past, some mocks of a potential new dashboard, which would be, um, rather than a CI build system, it's more of a health, a health status dashboard for all the projects as the focus mm -hmm. and integrate with all the different upstreams. So whether you publish to Docker Hub or somewhere else, um, E to E test may, they could be wherever, um, and taking all of the different places and aggregate and show the health of the projects. And from the ARM standpoint, what that would mean is um, finding, encouraging and working with the projects to publish those, run those, and then using some type of standards for showing the status, showing where the artifacts, and making those as available as x86. Okay, and that's for graduated and incubating projects as you have on to this uh, list today, well, right? Yeah, graduated and incubating, uh, the only other one that we have is a, subs a subset of ONAP. Mm -hmm. um, all of the software, of course, is open source on what this dashboard is. And when there has been conversations about having other dashboards to show other things, whether that's maybe sandbox projects or other projects besides uh, the CNCF projects. Um, and we had some initial work and there's a lot of, um, I guess, design around additional screens that potentially could show more projects. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we don't want to take on too much though. We want to keep it focused, which is where we thought maybe doing the integration and, and then helping to help with projects to publish and use some type of standard that makes it easier to integrate and show the status. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, that, that sounds great actually. And, and in your discussion with some of the projects like Jaeger and, and similar, which uh, you've shown a proof of concept on x86, have you also discussed the uh, ARM angle with them or, or and, and if, if you have or planning to, we can, we can participate in that discussion and see how to stimulate interest or how, how best we can, we can support that. Uh, we have had a, a few discussions. I, um, I, before we dive in, I, th I think we need to figure out how, um, how to get more contributing mm -hmm. besides a small group, which is part of the thing so that we can take on more. But I'm happy yeah. to talk with you about some of those plans and ideas and, and then we can see um, where that could go. Okay, no, I would be, I would be happy to, to um, I would be happy to do that, yeah. I mean, the ultimate goal, I agree with you, is to reuse or plug into more of what the upstream project is doing, because that's where most value is, right? So uh, the, the more we yeah. can go to that direction, the, the better long-term that, that is. So if the end goal is uh, towards having a, um, a kind of, status reflecting the, the how the upstream is and uh, rather than rebuilding things downstream i think it's much better right um I, ideally the, beyond health status what we were envisioning um which goes back kind of to the start of this but it would be a little bit different on the timeline be you could see the status of all the different stages for whatever people publish, whatever the projects are willing to publish. Mm -hmm. And then beyond that, if someone was interested in a certain build, you'd be able to click through and get the artifacts for that. So if you said you wanted FluentD, um, a tested version of FluentD on the latest um, stable Kubernetes that built on ARM, then you could go through and, and have a direct link to the published artifacts. Okay. And you could go through and find all of those pieces um, quickly and mm -hmm. see how they fit together, including being able to retest yourself 
um, if, if we're saying you're looking at something in production or you're you may be trying to build a prototype and you want to match, match those. So the, the long term would be a matrix of the different compatibility testing that you're seeing. Mm -hmm. um, and what's behind the dashboard is a API server that provides the stats um, via JSON. So the one potential that you could get out of this would be a some type of subscription feed or whatever you want where you can um, get the compatibility testing or, or track the test results from any specific one. And it would be in a, a standard common format, so you wouldn't have to worry where it's coming from to go track it down. The, these are more long-term potential, so it's again what, what type of interest from the community. And the right now, a lot of the, at least from CNCF standpoint, more of the efforts have been shifted to some other initiatives. And I guess I'll, I'll mention these just because they do have CI, but um, where things are. Um, the CNF conformance and then CNF testbed. So these are all telecom related. Mm -hmm. Um, and the CNF testbed does have their CI capabilities in this, and there is actually a, mm -hmm. a CI system. But there's examples, and potentially what could happen on this, which would be a relation, I can relate it back to the dashboard, would be having status updates for different use cases. So right now what we're looking at is individual projects and deployment. But this would be more like an integration test or testing with full examples. And okay. then the other um, initiative that's related would be the CNF conformance, so Cloud Native Network Function conformance. So this is um, testing how um, network applications for telecom are following cloud native principles. And this actually does run um, all of the, this is, is a test suite and it's running in Travis. So what's not happening, um, uh, or what's not here on either of these initiatives is a dashboard, but theoretically you could do something similar and say, we, what is the status of um, a group of tests that you care about that may be testing a certain set. So if people are interested in dashboards outside of, say, the, the CI system that's running a specific project, mm -hmm. then that would be a possibility to, to okay. take something like this and, and build something for another project or, or take the idea and, and have it refocused. Maybe we don't care as much about build, but you want to test um, some type of integration between projects. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I have a new colleague who is, uh, I'll try to connect him with you, who is uh, going to look more into the CNF aspect. So I will try to uh, to um, to do that uh, in the coming few weeks. Sounds good. Because Shai, who I had introduced before, has, uh, has moved companies, so it's um, we have somebody else who is now looking into that. All right. Okay. And in terms of uh, community, do you have beyond arm? Do you have other? Interests, whether from developers or companies who are, who are willing to to join, contribute, or how how is how have you discussed that? Or? Uh, well, there's a, a lot of interest in the te on the telecom side, so mm -hmm. and we're actively looking at contributors and testers for the conformance, uh, CNF mm -hmm. conformance. Um, 
the test bed has uh, some folks uh, from places like Intel and some telecoms that are trying this out, which is it, this actually uh, deploys a environment packet to run the different tests and builds out everything automatically, the tool chain. Mm -hmm. And there's people that are looking at testing this on, uh, testing this themselves with their own packet accounts and also testing it on self-hosted machines within labs. As far as the CNCFCI dashboard, um, whether this dashboard itself, the one that CNCFCI has, or the software, there's been, there's not really been much traffic um, and requests to update anything on the dashboard lately. Mm -hmm. um, there was, I guess, over the last couple of months, with I think with COVID-19, it's kind of thrown everything else up in there. But in the last couple of months, there's been a few mentions on different Slack channels, or maybe someone mentioned something in a Twitter issue related to a build problem, and there will be some someone pointed something out, and it's noted. So it, I guess, it's somewhat still sane, but we haven't been pushing to market it to see if we want to switch and go some other path, maybe to help with the false positives and stuff. Um, okay. I think before continuing to push and say, let's use this and getting more projects, it's kind of, we need, we need to decide if, if it's going to go forward, is there going to be enough interest to help contribute or help make that happen so that we can bring it to that next stage? Because right now it's in this in-between with, you know, Core DNS is doing builds, running the test, and then um, building the artifacts and doing the deploys, um, Envoy, et cetera, and then you have some of them that are doing integrations but they're only, we're only partway there. So ideally we'd get shifted fully over. And if we're gonna put in that effort, then we need to make sure that community-wise it's gonna bring value and um, there's, have at least some other interested party maybe to help in some fashion. Yeah, I know I agree, it makes sense, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Does anyone else have any comments or questions or totally different? Maybe this brings up other ideas. Oh, looks like. Hoping that Tracy, who was on here, would maybe talk about the Play Hub. I think they dropped. All right. Well, if there's no other topics, um, I guess we can end early. Okay. No, I don't have any additional uh, topics there, so we can we can follow up offline if you want some point. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, shoot me an email or follow up on Slack. Mm -hmm. We're going to try to figure out a uh, format on this call itself to thinking of um, some other ways to maybe kickstart it if we're going to continue. Ideally, get more general CI conversations from cloud native related CI would be good, but we got to get enough other groups and people interested to do that. Yeah, I agree. Thanks everyone. Okay, thank you. Have a good day, bye. Cheers.